Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Babel on Talmud. Today we're studying Daf uh, Kuf Hey of Masech the Shabbos, Daf 105. And um, cool Daf, another cool Daf here. So the uh, Daf begins talking about um, abbreviations in the Torah, certain things that are written in the Torah that are abbreviations. Okay, fine. Uh, then a, just a little nugget about about writing. Um, remember that. It's a concept that came up a little bit in the past of Enya Diel Chatsi Shir, but it's really nothing to be worried about. Pretty simple. Um, and then we start a new parak, parak Oreg. And we talk a little bit about weaving, some, of course, minimum shiurim for a chiv when it comes to weaving. And then talk about what happens when you tear your shirt on Shabbos, um, either uh, in response to hearing that somebody passed away or because you're angry. Um, so those are some interesting discussions as well. Friends, let's get started. Um, we're on Daf Kufhe Omud Aleph, two lines into the page. Kasav Achas no Os Achas no Trikon Rabbi Yoshua ben Besera Machai Vachacham Potron. If you write one letter, but that one letter is an abbreviation. For example, if you write the letter Hey, and it let's say means Hashem. So according to Rabbi Yoshua ben Besera, not Rabbi Yehuda ben Besera, but Rabbi Yoshua ben Besera. Okay. I wonder if when we mentioned the Bnei Besera, that's like Rabbi Yoshua ben Besera, Rabbi Yehuda ben Besera. I don't know. So he says that you're chayev. Chacham potun. Am Reb Yochanan Mishum Reb Yosi ben Zimra. Wow. So it says Reb Yochanan in the name of Reb Yosi ben Zimra. Minayin l'dashon u'trikom in the Torah. How do we know already in the Torah that there are abbreviations in the Torah? Shneimar, as the pasuk says, it says that uh, 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 the Eibushter says to Avram Avinu, right, that he's going to change his name from Avram to Avram, that to Avraham, that he's Av Hamon Goyim. So the puzzle says, Ki av hamon goyim nisaticha, and av and hamon are abbreviations for other things. Av nisaticha le umos, bacher nisaticha ba umos. Av stands for that I have made you a father uh, among, among the nations, and bacher uh, chosen. I've made you chosen among the nations. Hamon, what does hamon stand for? So, chaviv nisaticha ba umos, I've made you desirable in the nations. I guess the hay and the the ches are interchangeable there. Um, I lost my place. Melech nisaticha la umos. I've made you a king for the nations. And as Rashi points out, that um, when Avram goes to buy a burial plot for Sarah, so what does Ephron say? He says, Nisi elukim ata. You are a prince of God among us. Vasik nisaticha umos. I've made you an elder among the nations. Naman nisaticha la umos, and I've made you trustworthy to the nations. Rabbi Yochanan didei amar. So now Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yochanan says for himself, meaning the last thing we just said was Rabbi Yochanan in the name of Rabbi Yossi ben Zimra, but now this is Rabbi Yochanan's own opinion, which is Anochi, that when it says uh, uh, the first of the Aser Sidibros, Anochi Hashem Elokecha Sheir Tzeisicha Meretz Time. What does Anochi stand for? No trikon ona nafshi ksavis yahavis. Me myself, I myself. Uh, create, uh, wrote, and, and gave the Torah, the Luchas. Rabban and Ami, the rabbi say, Amira ni'ima ksiva yehiva, that a beautiful saying, i.e. the Luchos, was a beautiful saying, a pleasant saying, uh, was written and given. Ikadami, the, the, those who say, Anochi lemafreya, that actually take Anochi and go backwards, Yud chaf nun aleph. Yehiva ksiva ne'aman in that which was given and written, its, uh, sayings are trustworthy. They say that by the best of Rab Nasan, what's a what where do we have an abbreviate abbreviation in Torah? So by Bilam. When Shah Korah Chukas Balak. Okay, in a few weeks from now we're gonna read about our friend Bilam. Well, I don't know, was he a friend or was he a foe? It sounds like he was probably more of a foe than a friend. Alright. So it says over there, Kiyarat Adarah Negdi, that when um our foe, Bilam, was having an altercation with his mule. Who was being very stubborn? So the mule says, "Ki yarat aderek and that yarat is an abbreviation for yara rasa natasa, natsa. That it got scared from the angel that was blocking its way. It saw the angel and it went aside. The very Rabbi Shmuel Tana, they taught by the Bismedjus of Rabbi Shmuel Carmel, that it says by the Minchas Omer, right on uh, Pesach, on the second day of Pesach, we bring the cor- the the the, the carbon Omer, which is why we then count Sfira Sa Omer. Um, from then. So it says Carmel, so Carmale, like a complete, uh, a complete, like growth, complete bud. Rav Achabar Yankiv Amar, 
Vukilalani Klala Nimretzes. So, um, David Amelech says about, um, what does he say about that? Shimi Ben Gera. That he cursed me, a very terrible curse. And Nimretzes is no trick on Noefu. He is an adulterer. Moavihu. He's a Moabite. Which is interesting because, um, David Amelech comes from Rut Amoavia, right? Rotzeach, who is a murderer. Sarer, who is a, is a, is a torturer. Toeva, who he is uh, an abomination. Reb Nachum Bar Yitzchak Amar Manadaber Umanitstada that Yehuda says to when when um, when uh, after they get framed for stealing the goblet of Paro and the uh, servant of Yosef or the the goblet I guess of Yosef right and then the servant of Yosef chases after them and catches them and Yehuda says over there Manadaber Manitstadak. What should we say? Now should we be righteous? And it's tadak. Nechonu manachnu. We are correct. Tzadikah manachnu. We are righteous. Tehorah manachnu. We are pure. Daki manachnu. I think it's also another version of pure. Um, uh, Kedosh manachnu. We are holy. So these are different examples of abbreviations in the Torah. Very interesting. New Mishnah. Akosev shte osius b'shte ha'alamis. Somebody who writes two letters in two sort of mistakes, meaning he wrote one letter, then uh, he, he realized that, oops, I shouldn't be doing this, then he forgot again, and he wrote a second letter. Um, but then ra- then the, 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 Gemara can, the Mishnah continues, Achas shachers v'achas ben arbayim. One in the morning, one in the afternoon. And as Rashi points out, very interestingly, so in, in the, the only Rashi on the Mishnah, there's one Rashi on the Mishnah, it says, Achas shachers v'achas ben arbayim, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. Kevin the havale shows ben time kidei leida, that since there was enough time for him between the morning and the afternoon for him to have realized, so we treat it like two alamas. Isn't that interesting? Even if he may not have realized an interesting, but there, in, in, in the interim, in the meantime, but since there was enough time for him to realize, that is already enough to be considered two alamas. Very interesting. So now the Gemara says, but my, so, so what did the Mishnah say? So the Mishnah said, So as we've seen already twice before, Ram Gamliel says that you are chayav, and the Chacham say you are a potter. How come? So says the Gemara. But my kamifligay. What is the machlokas? Rabbi Gamliel savor ein yadiel lechatzi shir. Rabbanon savor yesh yadiel lechatzi shir. So according to Rabbi Gamliel, when you have two halves of a shir, Rashi actually explains it very beautifully, very succinctly, and very beautifully. So he says yesh yadiel lechatzi shiur. Says Rashi, lechalek to divide up the two shiur. So for in our example, in our example, you wrote two letters. You had an aleph and a bays, for example. So to divide up the two letters. So that the second half won't join together with it. So Ke'ilu, you wrote one letter, and then you realize in the middle that you shouldn't be writing, and then you wrote another letter. So the question is, does that realization that we have in the middle, does it sort of disqualify, let's say, or, or interfere with the second letter to prevent it from joining together with the first letter to create a, a complete share? According to Rabbi Gamliel, this knowledge that he has in the middle does not serve to um, sort of separate and disqualify the or prevent you from being able to join together these two letters and therefore we join them together you have a share and therefore you're chayv according to the chacham there is yadiya l'chatzi share and therefore this, the fact that you had a realization in the middle is going to prevent you from being able to uh, combine the two halves of the shear into one and say that you have a complete share therefore they say that you are potter hadranalach habone we will come back to you perik habone very very exciting well that was a quick perik I think it was very pleasurable. I think I enjoyed that very much. I hope you did as well. Friends, let's move on to Perika Oreg. I think that you will enjoy this Perika as well. Or at least I hope so. Of course, you guys enjoy everything, right? Of course you do. Okay, says the, says the Mishnah. Rabbi Eliezer Omer. Says Rabbi Eliezer. Ha'oreg shlosha chutim batchila ve'echar ala oreg chayv. Oh, so says the holy Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer ben Hurkanos. Oh, one of the students of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. So, this is Rabbi Eliezer, Aoreg, Shlosha Chutin Batrila. So, what's the minimum shear for weaving? So, says Rabbi Eliezer, well, if you're starting off and you're creating a, a, a woven garment, so then uh, the minimum shear is weaving three threads, probably three rows of threads. And Ve'achas al Aoreg. Now, once you already have a garment, let's say, you know, you're not, not necessarily completing the entire garment in one sitting, so you've already started the garment and now you're coming back to it. Even if you add just one row, that's going to be significant and you're going to be chayv. The Chacham say the shear for the Malacha of Oreg on Shabbos is always going to be two threads. Whether you're just getting started with the garment or whether you're coming back to the garment. The shear 
to, for a chiyuv chatos for oreg is always going to be two threads. Haosa shte bate nirin oy 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 benirin bekeros benapa bechvara uvesal chayev. Okay, who remembers what the bate nirin are? So remember. Um, okay, so we have our loom, right? Right, we have our loom. If you remember from, you know, how the loom looks. So there would basically be these warp threads as we reference every few days. The warp thread threads and the weft threads that you kind of weave in between, right? So basically you would have a whole bunch of warp threads that would be these kind of, let's say, vertical threads and you had a whole bunch along the width of the garment. And then they would be um, sort of taut in the uh, loom. And you'd have these two, um, what were they called? Like... Uh, like frame sorts of things. I forget what exactly they called them, but basically these two frames that you would li- you you know lift one up in order to lift up 50% of the thread so you could throw the weft in. Then the next time you would lower the one that you lifted up and then you would lift up the other one to, to lift up the other 50% of the thread so you could throw the weft uh, the other direction. So so the button near in are those little holes in these um frames, right? So the frame, so let's say there were 100 thread, let's say the, the, the garment was 100 threads wide. So each of these two frames would have um like two, uh, 50 of these holes in them and you would stick you would alternate putting the threads through each of the two uh, frames so like the first thread would be through the first frame and then the second thread would be through the second frame the third thread would once again be through the first frame then the fourth thread would once again be through the uh, second frame and you know basically 50 percent of the threads would be in the in one frame and uh the other 50 percent of the threads alternatively i keep on saying threads i think but um I mean to say threads would be through the other frame and that way you'd be able to just kind of, you know, alternate and lifting up 50% of them, throwing through the weft, lowering those 50%, lifting up the other 50%, throwing the weft through in the other direction. So if you stick already two threads through these, um, bataneerin, which are these holes in these like frame things, so then, um, you will be high. So I also say shte bataneerin. So somebody like kind of puts two threads through these um, holes. So benirin bekeros benapu v'chvaru v'sal chayev. Okay, so the Gemara is going to talk about that a little bit. But basically, in any of these contexts, whether it's benirin bekeros, we're going to talk about what those are, or whether it's in like a sieve, a sifter, or some kind of a basket, whatever you're weaving. Okay, two of these um, sort of threads or warp things are going to be the minimum shear. Vatover shtei tfiris vakoyam and aslit for shtei tfiris. Somebody who stitches two stitches, or somebody who tears in order to then Stitch two stitches um, is going to be chayv. Friends, let's see what the Gemara is to t- say for us. Ki also Rabbi Yitzchak, when Rabbi Yitzchak came from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, Tani he taught Shtaim. So he taught that according to Rabbi Eliezer, the minimum was um, somebody who, who 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 weaves a minimum of two threads. Now ve'anan tenan shlosha. One second, our mission says that according to Rabbi Eliezer, the minimum is three threads. Low kasha, no problem. Haba alime, haba Depends. Somebody's yelling. I wonder what they're yelling about. Well, as long as they're not yelling for me, they never yell for me. They don't even know who I am. But Bobo, this morning, Bobo is yelling 4.20 in the morning. 4.20 a.m., Bobo was yelling. He wasn't saying Bobo. I don't know. I think he was yelling somebody's name. 4.20 in the morning, man. 4.20 in the morning, man. I don't know. It's not the right time to yell. Oh, hey, hey, let's go fight there. Come on, come on. We, we have a daft to learn. We have a daft to, daft to learn. Uh, anyways, so, 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 new. So, our Mishnah says that, that according to Rabbi Eliezer, um, if you weave three threads at the beginning of the garment, so then you are a uh, chayv. And, but when Rabbi Yitzchak said, he, when, when Rabbi Yitzchak came from Eretz Yisrael to Babel, he said, um, that you're chayv for two threads. So, so, what's pshat? So we say, well, it depends if they are thick threads or if they are thin threads. Now the question is, yeah, so if they're thick threads, then what? Two, three, like what? What is it? So, Amrila Lahai Gisa, Vamila Lahai Gisa. So you can actually explain this kind of either Way, okay. Amri la lahagi. So you can explain it one way, which is alime tlasa lo sasre tre sasre katina tre nami lo sasre. So those who say, well, when you have the thick threads, thicker threads, you know, are harder to kind of stay together because they're thicker, so they want to unravel. Um, so therefore, you actually need three threads in order to keep them taut. Whereas two threads would come out. Whereas smaller, thinner threads, uh, even two would be enough. 
Tlasa Yidie Trelo Yidie Alime Tre Nam Yidie, or the those who say, actually, no, it's the opposite, that the thicker threads, you would only need two of them because, um, you know, two threads, you can already see something when they're thicker. Uh, whereas the smaller, the thinner threads, you can't even like notice that something's going on until there are three. Okay, so two different ways to kind of understand Rabbi Lezer's opinion. Tani, we're learning a brisa oreg. So basically, for the for the rest of the amud, we're basically going to talk about oreg a little bit, a little bit technical, but um, then it kind of moves away from weaving again. Um, but all right, just it's cool. It's not it's not too crazy, but it is a little technical. Tani, we're learning a brisa oreg gimel chutin. Um, somebody who weaves three threads, batchila, okay, at the beginning, ve'echad al oreg chayv, and one. You know, once you already have sort of stuff that's been woven, so even if you only add one, you're chayev, fine. V'chachamim om se the chachamim bein batchila bein basov shiuran beis chutan. Whether it's at the beginning, whether it's in the middle, you know, it's always going to be two threads. Uvasafa uvasafa beis chutin birochav givmo batenirin. Fine. Now, if you're uh, on the end, meaning if you're building like a um, like a border around the around the garment, so then. Uh, even if the width of the of of the of this border is only um, two threads, wait, what? Yeah, in well, some of Bayes Chutin, so two threads berochav gimel batinir, right? Exactly. Meaning two weft threads, i.e., two times you take the weft and you throw it in, in you know, to, back and forth among the warp threads um, at a width of at least three um, warp. Threads, okay. So, okay, if you have like three threads, a three-thread uh, width, because after all, it's just the um, the the uh, I don't know if it's called a hem or a seam or a frame or a I don't know, but like on the outside of the garment, surround the border. I don't know. So it's much thinner, right? It's just the border of it. So um, the thickness, the width is just going to be like you know three kind of uh, warp threads. Um, and so if you kind of throw the weft two times, so that would already be chayev on the sides of it. Fine. Um, what is this thin little um, seam frame side thing similar to? Laorik tilsul cotton, like somebody who um, weaves a uh, little belt, beis chutin peroch of gimel batinirin, which is um, you know two uh, weft threads at a width of three warp threads. Sweet. Haorik gimel chutin batchila. So we said that somebody who Weaves um, three threads at the beginning, ve'echad ala arig, and one after that. So, meaning if you came back to it later and only did one thread, chayv. Stama Rabbi Eliezer. Okay, so that sounds like it's Rabbi Eliezer, even though we didn't attribute it directly, um, explicitly according to Rabbi Eliezer. That would certainly sound like Rabbi Eliezer's opinion. Tanya idach. Now we have another brace that says arig beis chutin al hagas ve'ala imra. Somebody who um, weaves two threads, either in the middle of the garment or on the sides, on these like. Um, uh, Outside things that we've been talking about. Wow, what the heck is the word for that? I'm forgetting. Border, maybe? Yikes. Chayev. Rabbi Yezer Omer says, Rabbi Yezer, Afilu Echad, even if it's just um, one thread. Uvsaf, okay. So even if it's just one thread, okay, because you're adding it later. Okay. Uvsafa Shne Chutin, Birocha of Shlosha Batinirin, and once again, on the um, border thing, so then even if it's just two um, weft threads at a width of three warp threads, Chayev, um, Hadlamaz what is it similar to? Of course, it's Lorig Tziltul Katan, it's similar to when you weave a um, you know, small little belt, Shne Chutin, um, two weft threads, Al Rocha of Gimel Batinirin, on a width of three um, uh, warp threads. So we said somebody who weaves um, th- um, um, two threads, either in the middle of the garment or on the sides of the, on the borders of the garment, chayev stomach rabbanan. So that sounds like it's the rabbanan, right? Because they said two is enough. Friends, let's move on. Haosa shte batenirin chule. So we said somebody who, um, who, who like makes these two batenirin, kind of puts the two warp threads through these holes in these like frame things. So. Um, my benirin, what are these nirin? Amr Abai Tarte Bivate Nira Vachada Benira. So even the art school said that you know, it's hard to know exactly what this is talking about. You know, it's talking about very something very technical, very specific that is essentially has to do with the way that their looms looked. And we can't know exactly what their looms look like, but basically, you know, you would have these 
frame things that you'd put the um, strings through holes. So uh, somehow you'd have two threads wrapped around the hole and then one thread like in the hole itself. It's a little bit hard to hard to tell, but um, it sounds like if you would basically put two of these warp threads through these, um, I think they're called heddle, heddle holes or something. So that, you should probably avoid that on Shabbos. Just wait till tomorrow. Bikeros, what's this Kairos? So I once worked at, 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 at a software company where uh, there was some internal project called Kairos. Very interesting. So my Bikeros, Amar Rav Matsuvisa, okay, some kind of heddle frame. Oh, so I think I was saying that right, frame. That's good. All right, so two threads through this heddle frame. Yay. All right. Vatover based Firis, somebody who, who, who stitches two stitches. Ha Tanina, but obvious milachos, Vatofer based Firis. But one second. Why is our Mishnah mentioning somebody who sews two stitches? I mean, we already, you know, and Daf Ein Gimel Amar Aleph, when we listed all the 39 milachis, so one of them listed was Atofer Shteit Firis. So why are we listing it again over here? So Mishnah the Kabbai, the Mishnah Seifa. Well, because what did we say? We wanted to say the next part, which is Vakorea al Manas lit for based fears. Um, because we want to teach in the mission that somebody who tears in order to stitch two stitches, that's why I mentioned also somebody who stitches two stitches. But however, Katani Nami Atofer Vakorea. Oh, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. I, I always read that wrong. Like, I read it wrong every time I read this thing. Vakorea al Manas lit for based fears, Katani Nami Atofer Vakorea. Because it wanted to say, uh, um, you know, also somebody who tears in order to stitch two stitches, so it also therefore over here, uh, so it also it taught both of them. Hanami tanina bavis melachos. But one second, tearing in order to stitch two stitches was also listed in the avos melachos, right? If we look at that, ein gimel melachos, it says vatofer shtei tefiros vakorei amenas litvor shtei tefiros. So really, there is literally it's literally just repeating verbatim what we already taught on daf ein gimel. So why why repeat? So ella. Mishum the Kabbalah the Mishnei Seifa. So no, it's because the very next Mishnah teaches Hakorea b'Chamasu v'Ameso that somebody who tears because he's angry or because um, somebody passed away. Um, so we say he's potter. So because we were going to get into tearing in that context, so we also kind of started off with the basics of tearing. Mishum Achi Katani Hatofer Shtei Tfiris. That's why we also taught over here Hatofer Shtei Tfiris, just sort of as a um, you know lead up to our next Mishnah, which talks about if you tear in other contexts as well. Somebody who t- uh, tears in order to stitch two stitches. How do we find this? We find it in a situation where you have, let's say, have a garment which it's like uneven. It's almost cute. There are pockets on it, even though you want it to be flat. So you might tear, make a little tear so you can then stitch it properly. Um, that is when you would tear in order to make Two stitches. All right, friends. New Mishnah. Hakorea b'chamasu v'ameso v'chol amikalklin p'turim. Oh, somebody who tears something or his garment, somebody who rends his garment because he's angry, or because somebody passed away, or any kind of destructive destructive activity. P'turim. V'amikalka amenas l'sakin shiur kimesakin. Somebody who destroys in order to fix. So then the shi'ur is like fixing. So for example, like somebody, you know, tears in order to uh, tear, in order to stitch two stitches. So Mistama, like the shear for that is tearing enough to, you know, two stitches worth. I feel like in chassidus, there's probably like, you know, uh, a lot of things to be learned from this Mishnah. That somebody who destroys in order to fix, it's kili fixes. Very, 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 very beautiful. Shi'ur, hamilaben v'amnapets, so what is the shear for somebody who bleaches or somebody who um, separates threads or somebody who dies or spins? Um, so what's the shear, Lemaise? So it is, what's a sit? Um, so if you are watching the video, so then you, I could show you. If you're not watching the video, I could describe it to you. Either way, it's pretty simple. It's the space between your index finger and your thumb. So if you're watching the video, I'm showing it to you what it looks like on my little hand, but um, if you're not watching, I'm sure you can just test it out yourself. It's the space between your thumb and your index finger. So, um, fine. So, so, so if you, so what do we say? So we said that all these things for um, bleaching, for separating threads, for 
dying for spinning. Um, so it would be if you do this on a thread that is long enough to fit between your thumb and your index finger, but it says kaful, twice that amount. Somebody who uh, weaves two threads, so the width is, um, the basic width is going, the default width is going to be um, the space between your thumb and your index finger, but just once, not twice. Says the Gemara, Oh, so we have a kasha. So we have a brysa, and in the brysa it says somebody who tears his clothing either because he's angry, uh, which we'll get to a little bit later, or because he is in mourning for somebody who died. So chayev. Interesting. He's nonetheless yotze is chayev for having to rend his garments. No. So on the one hand, in our mission, we said that if you tear your garment because somebody passed away, you're going to be potter. Yet in our yet in this brisa, we seem to be saying that if you tear your uh, garment for somebody who passes away, you would be chayev. So what's pshat? So the Gemara says, Lo kasha, it's no problem. Abimez dide, abimez de ama. It depends. If it's your mace that you have a chiyuv in order to tear kriya on, <clears throat> so then you're going to be chayev because then it's misakin. You're, you're accomplishing something po- positive, right? You have a chiyuv to tear your clothing, to clo- tear your clothing for, let's say, a relative. And you're tearing your clothing, so you're, you're, it's misakin, and therefore you're going to be uh, chayev. However, in our Mishnah, when it says you're going to be potter, it's talking about a meis uh, de alma. Just, you heard somebody passed away, and for whatever reason you tore your clothing, uh, but you didn't have a chiv to tear your clothing, so you are going to be potter because it's mekalka. Va meso katani. But one second, in the Mishnah it also says meso. It says his meis, which sounds like it's not just a meis de alma. It's somebody who he has a chiv to bury in. So the Gemara answers, le'olam b'meis di day. Um, so really they are both talking about, um, somebody who he has a chiyuv to bury this person. However, however, uvahanach to lab bnei avelos ninu. However, the Mishnah that says that you're putter, it's not for an immediate relative. It's not for somebody you have to uh, practice the practices of mourning. Right, which include uh, tearing your garment. So when the Brisa says that you are going to be chayv, it's for an immediate relative who you have a chiyuv to mourn and to tear kriya. So that's why you're going to be chayv because you're it's misakin, you're, you're 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 fulfilling your obligation. Whereas um, our Mishnah that says that you're going to be putter for rendering your garment for a uh, mace, that is going to be for somebody you have a chiyuv to bury. I assume that that's probably like. You know, if there's nobody else to bury him or, I don't know, maybe let's say you're on a desert island with one other person and he dies. So, you know, you gotta, gotta bury him. He's not a relative. You don't have a chiyuv to do kriya, but you still have to bury him. So it's mesti day, but at the same time, it's meso, but at the same time, um, there's no chiyuv kriya. So if he tears kriya, he's going to be pater because it's mekalka. But one second, the Gemara says, one second, but don't just tell me that the only time when I'm going to be chayav is if it's an immediate relative, like a father, a mother, a brother, sister, child, daughter, right, son, daughter. So, 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 don't just say only those. What about a Tamar Chacham? If it's a Tamar Chacham, then you also have an obligation to tear Kriya, in which case you should be chayav as well. The Tanya is we learn in a brayso chacham shemais. If you have a tam chacham who dies, I call krovav. Everyone's his relative. I call krovav. What do you mean? Everyone is his relative. What if you're not his relative? So ella ema I call kikrovav. No, everyone is like his relative. What does that mean? I call korin alav. Everybody rends their garments for him. Everyone tears kriya. I call cholzin alav. Everybody, um, you know, also tears their shirt in such a way that their um, shoulder is exposed. I call mavrin alav berchava. Right when it comes to when somebody passes away, so the first meal. Um, that the family eats after the meal is fed to them by other people. It's not from their own food. So, so everyone is considered like his family in that they're fed from other people after, after the, um, burial. Um, new. So we see that even by a Tamil Chacham, you, you have a chiyuv to rend your garments. So why are we saying that it's only, um, immediate family that you'd be chayyav for? Even if it's Tamil Chacham, you should be chayyav because it's misakin. So let's read the When we say that your potter, it's also it's because he's not a tamar chacham or sheep. The adam kasher, and if it was a a kasher person, so chiyuve mechayev. So if it was an adam kasher, if it's you know just a good, righteous, upstanding person, so then also you have a chiyuv to rend your garments. The tanis will learn the brayz and pnei ma mason banu v'nosov shal adam kshen Wow, 
For what reason do, do, does a person's children die when they are young? Wow. So that the per, so that this person can have the experience of crying and mourning for an Adam Kasher. So God takes away a, 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 a child so that, so that the parent can mourn for an Adam Kasher. What? It sounds a little crooked. That sounds a little not nice. Uh, God's going to take away somebody's children just so that they should mourn, that they should, they should be able to have the experience of mourning properly. So, Ella shelo bacha visabel al adam kasher. Rather, uh, it's because this person did not um, cry and mourn for an upstanding person. Uh, that is why we take away his child as like a punishment. Kilu shakal bacha al adam kasher mochlin la akol avonosav. Because a person, oh, or I guess kilu, maybe it's like that. I don't know. Anybody, anybody who, 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 who cries for an Adam Kasher, so we, 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 we forgive all of his sins. Because of the honor that he did for this Adam Kasher in his mourning for him. And I guess that if he didn't mourn for this Adam Kasher, well then we don't get rid of all of his sins, in which case, maybe on account of his sins, we take away his child. But then again, it says, you know, we don't, um, right, right, so I don't know. Whatever it is, um, the point being that it's good to mourn for an Adam Kasher. And if that's the case, then you should tear Kriya for an Adam Kasher. So then, so then, don't just tell me that it's only, um, immediate relatives that you'd be hired for tearing Kriya on Shabbos or Tamil Chachamim, also an Adam Kasher. So let's read the Adam Kasher. This person wasn't an Adam Kasher, and therefore if you tear Kriya, you're Potter. Fine. The Lava Adam Kasher. V'i Dukai Bishasit Siyas Nishama. Oh. And what if, um, this person was there, present in the room or in the place, when the person who passed away, their uh, soul left their body. So chayuv mechayiv. Then you also have a obligation to tear kriya. Tatanis we learn in the brayso. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar Omer Omer al Ameiz b'shasit yes neshama chayiv the kriya. The Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar says that somebody who's standing um, by a uh, uh, person at the time that their soul leaves their body, so then uh, you have, no matter who you are, you have an obligation to to rend your garments. Um, what is it similar to the Sefer Torah Shinisraf? It's similar to a, a Sefer Torah that gets burnt, that I guess there you would also have an obligation to uh, rend your garments. So, 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 so we see there as well, there you had a chiv to rend your garments, and it would be misak, and you should be chayv. So, lo tzricha de lo kai b'shasit yes neshama, the person wants to know b'shasit yes neshama, when the soul left the body. No, so what do we see, friends? So basically, our Mishnah said that if a person tears his garment for a person who passed away, so then he is potter. And we have a that says chayev. So we say, well, the Bryce is talking about when it's a relative. But then we said, but it's actually more than that. It's not necessarily just a relative that you'd be chayev for. Well, also a tamar chacham, also an adam kasher, also a, um, if you were there, bishas tzitzias neshama. In those cases, you would be chayev for tearing your garment on Shabbos because it's misak and there's a reason to be doing it. You have a chayev to do it. However, if it's just a general person, um, so then, so then you would not, um, you, 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 you would be potter if you tear your clothes on Shabbos. Tenach me, so alachamaso, alachamaso kasher. Fine. So we've answered, um, the, the discrepancy between chiyuv and ptur for, um, meso, but what about for, uh, when he's angry? Our Mishnah that says that, our Mishnah said that if he tears his clothing because he's angry, so then he's gonna be potter. The Bryce said if he tears his clothes because he's angry, he's gonna be chayev. What's pshat? So, chamaso, alachamaso nami lo kasher. It's no problem. Harab Yehuda, Harab Shimon. Oh. So our Mishnah that says Potter is Reb Shimon. The Brisa that says Chayev is Reb Yehuda. So, Har Reb Yehuda. So the Brisa that says Chayev is Reb Yehuda. The Amar, Melacha Shein Tzarech Legufa, Shein Tzarech Legufa, Chayev, Alea. So, the Brisa that says that you're Chayev, that is Reb Yehuda, who says that Melacha Shein Tzarech Legufa, you're Chayev, right? Of course. He didn't want this person to die, and therefore he didn't want to be tearing his clothes. So he tore his clothes, sure, but he didn't want to be doing it. So it's a legufa, right? Just like we said, when you take out a mace from the house, you didn't want the mace to die in the first place. Therefore, the otzah is a legufa. So you're also you're tearing the clothes as a melacha shen legufa. So Rebuda says that you're going to be chayiv for that. legufa pater and the Mishnah that says that you're pater for rending your garments out of. Uh, Oh, did I say mace? Oh, sorry, I confused that. No, it's out of anger, right? So, so, and as Rashi actually points out, by the way, that you could have said, you could have applied Melchashen and Tzuchel Gufa, uh, to the mace as well, but it would prefer to keep it under the, the, under one, 
Tana and just say that it depends if it was like a, a relative or not, rather than to say that it's one's Reb Shimon, one's Reb Yudah. But no, I'm sorry, I, confu- I got confused. We're talking about anger over here, right? But again, it's the same principle of Melech HaShin You'd rather that you wouldn't be angry in the first place, and then you wouldn't be tearing your, your garment, right? So it's Melech HaShin Yitzchich Lugufa. And um, so Reb Shimon says you're potter, and therefore the mission is Reb Shimon. Reb Yudah says, Melech HaShin Yitzchich Lugufa, you are chayev. And therefore the b'risa is going to be Rabbi Yehuda. Fine. Okay. But one second. When Rabbi Yehuda says, and this came up once before, I don't remember where, but this came up once before, um, that Rabbi Yehuda, when he says, uh, but that's only going to be if it is misakin, if you're doing a positive uh, malacha. But here it's mikalkel. You're tearing your clothing because you're angry. So not only is it malacha shenetzrich legufa, Right, because you would rather not be angry in the first place. You're only doing this because you're, you know, you're angry. Um, but aside from the it's mekalkel. So why would Rabbi Yehuda say that you're chayv? Some of you would say that you're potter. So I'm Rabbi Oven, Hainami Misakinu. So Rabbi Oven says that actually this is also considered misakin when you tear your clothing when you're angry. How come? Oh, because he's making a pleasurable experience for his yitzer hara. Right, because the Yitzhahara, as Rashi says, He's kind of like, you know, by, by, by letting out his anger on his, on his clothing and tearing his clothing, he's kind of, uh, uh, you know, easy, you know, re- settling his anger somewhat. So, but it says, But are you allowed to just settle your anger? Would that make it permitted? Well, would that make it like misakin just because you're kind of giving into your Yitzhahara? And, 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 and tearing your clothing, would that make it considered misakin and say that therefore Rabbi Yudah would say that Melach Hashem Yitzchik Lugufa is chayv in this case? Ve'atanya. We learn in Bryce, Rabshim ben Elazar, it says Rabshim ben Elazar, Mishum Chilfa bar Agra, Shamu Mishum Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, Hamakurah Abogadah v'chamaso, somebody who tears his clothing because he's angry, Vamashaber Kalev v'chamaso, or somebody who um, um, uh, breaks uh, his vessels because he's angry. Because he's angry, he like scatters his money. It should be in your eyes like somebody who's over at Vodazar. This is how the Yetzahara works. Today he says, do X. Tomorrow he says, do Y. Until finally he really gets, you know, everything was just a setup for what the Yetzahara really wants you to do is to eventually go and be Oved Avodazara. Um, Rabbi Avin says, Rabbi Avin, Micro, oh, where do we have a pasuk to show this kind of uh, um, order of events, Lo, or, or, or not to give in to your Yetzirah? Lo yeh b'cha el azar, that there shouldn't be in, 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 inside, in, inside of you a like foreign god. Lo tztach v'lel nechar, don't bow down to this foreign god. Ezu el zar sheish b'gufa shaladam, what is the foreign god that is inside of a person? Haviyomer is a Yetzirah. That is a person's evil inclination. New. So we see that it's pretty bad to give into your evil inclination. And therefore, you know, even if by tearing your gar- your clothing, you're going to maybe, uh, uh, you know, give a little bit of a, um, you know, calm down your anger a little bit and give into your Yetzirah. But giving into your Yetzirah is a bad thing because ultimately it might lead to being Ovid of Odazara, which is not something that we want. Um, so therefore... There's no really, really, there's no reason really to say why tearing your garment would be considered misakin. Um, and even according to Rabbi Yudah, says Melech Hashem Yitzchik Lugufa is chayav. But since this is mikalkel, um, you you should nonetheless be potter. So the tzricha de ka'avid lemirma aimsa a'in shebeise. Hmm. So actually, what this is talking about is if you're angry and you tear your clothes, but not because to give into your Yitzhahara, but you tear your clothes because you want to instill fear in your household, right? You want to make sure that, uh, the, right, the, right, that people aren't uh, getting too lax in their ways. So you show that you're very angry by tearing your clothes. And then the people in the house, they say, oh, yeah, 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 we better get our act together. And in that case, you're not tearing your clothes to give into your Yitzhahara. You're tearing clothes, your clothes in order to, Discipline the people in the house. Aha. Uh-huh. Rav Yehuda Shalif Matzbaisa. Rav Yehuda, he would, um, he would tear the, the, the border off of his clothing and he would show that he was very angry. Rav Acha Bar Yankiv Tavar Mane Tvire. Rav Acha Bar Yankiv, he would take broken, uh, vessels and he would throw them on the floor and break them more. Rav Sheshes, Rami La Leamse Monine Aresha. 
Rav Sheshis would throw some kind of a brine on the face of his maidservant. That sounds pretty intense. I feel like we actually had the Maise, another case like this, where Rav Sheshis was like pretty harif on his like staff at his house. I have to find that. But now that I'm thinking of it, I feel like there was another instance where, where Rav Sheshis was like pretty harif on like how to handle the people in his house. Oh gosh, I gotta find this. I gotta find this. I have no clue how I'm gonna find this. Well, of course, I'll find it one way or another. Okay, I'll find it. But probably right now. Anyways, um, that's pretty intense, right? So, so where are we? So, Rabbi Abba Tavern Nachtama. Rabbi Abba would break like the, the, the top of some kind of a um, jug. No. So we see that there are some times when you would, you know, like tear your garment to show, uh, to just kind of discipline and whip the people into shape, but not to give into your Yetzirah. So in that case, it would be Misakin, but at the same time, it was out of anger. So and you would be Chayv according to Rabbi Yehuda, but Pat according to Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi, says Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Mishum bar Kapara, kol amori demos al adam kosher, somebody who, 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 who cries, for a a a um a, a kosher person, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Sofran, God counts his tears, Umanicham Beveis Kenazav, and he rests them in his um in his like treasury. Wow. Shneimar, as the pasuk says, until him nodi safarta, ata simadim asi binodecha halo besifrasecha. Right. Every time I had to move around, you counted them. Ata simadim asi binodecha. You put all of my tears in your in your kind of container. Hello, Bissifrasecha, and you, uh, you, and you count them. Wow. I'm Rabbi Yehuda, I'm a Rav, Kamas Atzel Bespedo Shal Chacham. Somebody who is lax when it comes to, um, eulogizing a Chacham. Roy Likovro Bechayev. Wow. He's fit to bury him in his life, to cut his life short. Shinemar is a puzzle, says, Vayikbro also, Bigvu Nachlasu Betim Naserach. It says that when Yoshua died, they buried him in his, um, in his border by Timnas Serech. By the border of his of his uh, um, uh, inheritance by Timnas Serach, Asher Bahar Ephraim, that was on the uh, mountain of Ephraim, Mitzvon Lahar Gaash, that was north of Har, the mountain of Gaash, Melamitcher Rigesh Alei and Ahar the Organ, that God kind of um, made the uh, the mountain want to like kill them, and um, because they didn't give him enough uh, respect. Amr Bchir Bar Abba, Amr Rabbi Yochanan, come. It's also based on Shachacham. Says Rabbi Bchir Bar Abba, the name Rabbi Yochanan, somebody who's lax, who's lazy when it comes to the eulogy of a. Chacham, enu ma'irich yamim. He's not going to have long days. Mida keneged mida. Shenemar b'saisa b'shalcha to rivena. The b'saisa, like in the measure, God will send like um, plagues and stuff. So, so because of the the fact that um, he's not mourning properly, and the fact that this Chacham's uh, life was shortened, so his life is going to be shortened. Eisver Rabbi Chia Bar Abba to Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Chia Bar Abba asked Hakash to Rabbi Yochanan. Ve'avdu Amis Hashem Koyim Yoshua says that the nation served God all the days of Yoshua. V'chol Yimei Zekenim Asher Arichu Yomim Achrei Yoshua, and all the days of the Zekenim who lived long after Yoshua. So it sounds like they did have long days. So Amle Bavloi. So Rabbi Yochanan says to um, Rabbi Chia Bar Abba says Babylonian. I guess Rabbi Chia Bar Abba came from 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 Bavel. Yomim Arichu Shanim Loi Arichu. No, they may have had long days, but they didn't have long years. But what about at the end of Shema when it says, so that you'll have uh, long days? Well, that sounds like a good thing. What do you mean? It's saying that we're only going to have long days, but not long years? So what good is that? So Rabbi Yochanan says, no, it's different when it is um, for a blessing. For a blessing, you know, if, you, if God blesses you for long days, it means you're going to have a long life. Okay, fine. So let's do a recap of uh, Daf Kuf. Hey, so we started off with the abbreviations in the Torah. Where do we have um, you know precedent for abbreviations in the Torah? Okay. Then we talked about um, writing two letters uh, in two ha'alamot. So Rabbi Gamliel says that you're chayiv because it says yeshidi lechatzishir. Chacham say you're potter because they say uh, ain't no the opposite. And um, Rabbi Gamliel says you're chayiv because ain't yedi lechatzishir, and Chacham say you're chay, that you are potter because yeshidi lechatzishir. Fine. Um, the number of initial weaving threads that you need. Um, so Rabbi Eliezer said that you would start off with three, but after that you'd only, even if you only had one, you would chayv. The, you'd be chayv. The chacham say that um, you would need uh, that it's always two. Two is always the minimum. Now, 
when Rabbi Yitzchak came from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel. So, so, um, knew when Rabbi Yitzchak came from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, so he's, he quoted Rabbi Eliezer as only needing two. So he said, it depends. One's when it's, um, um, sort of thick threads, one's when it's thin threads, and there were two days, you know, you can kind of understand that either way. Either the thicker ones need three, or the thinner ones need three. Fine. Then we talked about tearing your shirt for a mace on Shabbos, right? So on the one hand, we had our Mishnah says that you're potter. On the other hand, we had the Brisa that says that you're chayav. So essentially we said that, well, in the context that you're chayav, it's because when you have a chayav, you're going to be chayav for tearing your clothes when you actually have a chayav to tear your clothes, right? Uh, so then it would be considered misakin. And those examples were if it's an immediate family or if it's a tamad chacham or if it's an adam kosher or if you were there at the time when the uh, person passed away. Any other case, you don't have a chayav to tear kriya, so you're going to be potter if you tear kriya on Shabbos. And then we taught uh, about if you tear your shirt out of anger. Um, so again, we have the same kash, which is our Mishnah says you'd be potter, but, we have the, but the Bryce says you'd be chayev. So we say, oh, well, it's the machlokas, Reb Shimon and, and Reb Yehuda with how do you relate to melacha shenet tzrich legufa. The Mishnah is Reb Shimon who says melacha shenet tzrich legufa is potter. The um, Bryce is Reb Yehuda who says melacha shenet tzrich legufa is chayev. We said, what do you mean? But it's uh, mekalkel. Reb Yehuda wouldn't say melacha shenet tzrich legufa is chayev when it's mekalkel. So we said, no, it's because you are... Uh, you're tearing your clothes in order to instill um, fear in, in your the people in your house so that they will get their act together. In that case, it is misake and melachashen and tzuchelugufu would be chayav according to Friends, have an awesome day. Peace.